Well, later this evening, Netanyahu is slated to convene the Forum of Seven Ministers to discuss his upcoming trip to the United States. The head of the National Security Council, Yaakov Amidror, was sent to Washington to lay the groundwork for that visit and is expected to return home tonight to brief the forum. Prime Minister Netanyahu will deliver what is expected to be a landmark speech to a joint session of the U.S. Congress. Joining me now here in the studio with some insights is Dan Dyker, Secretary General of the World Jewish Congress. Dan, thanks for coming in. Thank you, Yochanan. Um, the headline in the uh, newspapers today, certainly in Yediot, says that President Obama, Obama surprised and also disappointed uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu by deciding to deliver his long-awaited Middle East address before and not after the Prime Minister uh, addresses Congress. Uh, what do you think went into that sort of thought process on the part of the White House? Well, there are a number of different considerations. Uh, it was widely uh, discussed, reported today, that uh, the White House said it was just a question of their agenda and timing. It would uh, seem to me that it was much more than that. This uh, seems to be a, a well-strategically placed decision by the administration to really establish, to put, to put, to put their flag in the ground, establish uh, uh, the goalposts, if you will, uh, uh, and have of, of the discussion, and then have Mr. Netanyahu respond to uh, to the Mr. Uh, Obama's uh, uh, positions. It may well be. Uh, it's been said that uh, Mr. Obama may come out uh, e uh, even with statements calling for um, you know, a two-state solution uh, along the 1967 lines with land swaps and so on. Whatever it's going to be, it puts Mr. Netanyahu uh, into a position of responding as opposed to taking uh, sort of taking the offensive or establishing the agenda. He has to respond to the White House agenda. Now, George Mitchell over the weekend resigned. He's special U.S. Middle East envoy. Uh, he said he's just spent more than two years, and that's all he had budgeted for this uh, conflict resolution. Uh, but is it more than that? Is he having problems with the president, perhaps? Well, uh, clearly, Mr. Uh, Ambassador Mitchell, who had been much more effective during his first run uh, at the end of the uh, Oslo, uh, at the end of Oslo II, towards 2000, and then after. Uh, after the Intifada broke out in 2000, w has been virtually uh, powerless over the last two years. He has been frustrated, uh, it appears, with President Obama because Mr. Ambassador Mitchell wanted the United States to put down its own plan, and that, as we know, did not happen. Uh, so uh, clearly, uh, from Mr. Mitchell's point of view, there's, there's very little reason to, to stay on. And um, as has been said on this program, it was the Palestinians, frankly, that, that absolutely refused to come back to the negotiating table and used all kinds of excuses like uh, Israel building... Uh, in Jerusalem, which it's done for the last, you know, uh, uh, for the last 40, 45 years anyway, uh, as a reason not to negotiate. But so Mr. Mitchell altogether um, felt there was nothing more that he could add to, uh, to this process. Now, a friendly gesture apparently by the White House. They're going to let Mr. Netanyahu stay in Blair House while he's in Washington. Uh, it's a distinguished uh, residence for visitors. Uh, on the other hand, U.S. officials are saying that Mr. Netanyahu better come with some new, fresh ideas. Is the, is the relationship between Mr. Obama and Mr. Netanyahu um, better than it was, say, a year and a half ago? We, it was icy, icy then. It seems on the, out, you know, on the outside, you know, certainly with uh, the invitation of the president for the prime minister and his wife to stay at Blair House, that things seem to be warming up. But I, I would suggest not. I would suggest that, uh, that the, the president uh, uh, still feels, uh, as you put it, somewhat icy uh, towards Mr. Netanyahu and is, in fact, according to uh, sources of the administration, they're, they're waiting for some sort of uh, magic potion uh, for Mr. Netanyahu to bring. It's, it's strange, uh, Yochanan, because just a few years ago, having a Hamas Fatah government would be a non-starter with any American administration, certainly uh, since uh, 1967. But clearly there are those, and, and I believe uh, the president, uh, uh, first and foremost, are still looking for Mr. Netanyahu to bring more concessions and to bring more creative out-of-the-box thinking. However, he will be delivering this um, landmark speech in, in front of joint session of Congress. Uh, and uh, there is a, there's an overwhelming support for Mr. Netanyahu in Congress. And Congress, uh, as I came to learn after visiting there uh, just recently, is not looking for new Israeli concessions. They're looking for Israel to be steadfast. They're looking for Israel to create context into uh, what uh, the Jewish state has already um, contributed to the peace process. And they're looking for Mr. Netanyahu uh, to offer some pathos, some, some, real some real empathy and sympathy for, for the peace process itself. They are not looking for any more specific concessions from Israel in my view. Dan Dyker, Secretary General of the World Jewish Congress. Always great to have you with us, Dan. Thank Thanks. you.